This is the brand new M2 Ultra Max Studio. It has 24 core CPU, 72 core GPU, and 32 core neural engine. This one has 128 gigabytes of unified memory. Obviously, you can go up to 192 now. And this one has four terabytes of internal storage. You can go up to eight. And the thing is, it has the same specs if you get a Mac Pro with M2 Ultra in it. So if you don't need those PCI slots, just get this. Look at this. This is the Mac Pro now. And just like the previous Mac Studio, M2 Mac Studio comes in this nicely designed box, which opens up from its side so that Mac Studio is easier to reach and grab it from its bouncy platform, which contains the power cable. Besides that, we're greeted with some papers and a very nice Apple sticker. As usual, unboxing an Apple product is a lot of fun and Mac Studio is not an exception. The design of Mac Studio has not changed. At the back, it has the grill. Underneath that, four Thunderbolt 4 ports that supports data transfers up to 40 gigabits per second, which is also USB and a display port that can power up devices up to 15 watt of power. Next to that, we have the 10 gigabit Ethernet port, Mickey Mouse power connector, two USB-A ports, HDMI port that supports up to 8K60 or 4K240, a headphone jack, and and the power button. At the front, there's two more Thunderbolt 4 ports if you get the Ultra or USB-C ports if you get M2 Max. Next to that, we have the XTXC SD card reader that supports SD 4.0 and cards up to UHS 2. And at the bottom, we have another grill for air intake. And here's the thing, my M1 Ultra Max Studio that I use on my daily work is so fast that the Mac Pro with Intel that I had started collecting dust. So I sent it to get recycled. And I guess it recycled really well. Compared to my N1 Ultra Mac Studio, I was expecting M2 Ultra Mac Studio to be faster, but I wasn't expecting this. First, let's begin with the compressor app. Using the compressor app, I compressed an 83.5 GB ProRes 422 video file with Apple devices 4K preset. M1 Ultra finished this task in 6 minutes and 27 seconds, where M2 Ultra finished it in 3 minutes and 33 seconds. Which means there is a 44.9% decrease in the export time. And it doesn't stop there if you export in YouTube and Facebook or video sharing services 4K profile, you get 43.67% decrease in the export time. Of course, the lower times are better. You're exporting, you want the job to be finished as fast as it can. And when it comes to 10-bit HEVC H.265 export, there is 45%, 45.76% decrease in the export times, which is mind-blowing. I knew it was going to be faster, but I wasn't expecting it to be this much faster. When it comes to Geekbench CPU tests, M2 Ultra Max Studio is in the lead in the multi-core test. Same thing with Geekbench Compute Test. Needless to say, in these graphs, higher is better. There are no surprises when it comes to Cinebench test, and I'm happy to see that disk speeds, at least with the 4TB option, is fantastic. And when it comes to Final Cut, and when it comes to a compressed 8K video playback, M2 Ultra Max Studio had no problems. In fact, this is a multi-cam 8K video and as you can see, it plays back with no issues at all. By the way, the view option on Final Cut is set to quality. Even when I switch to full screen and then back to my Final Cut, M2 Ultra Mac Studio deals with it like a champ. 
M2 Ultra does okay when it comes to scrubbing around an 8K multicam footage that came out of my Sony A1. But of course, it is not as smooth as 4K unless you render the footage. None of this is rendered. This is just downloaded from the camera and lot applied on top of it. And also needless to remind you, it's a multicam footage. One, two, three. And then I did some tests on Final Cut, like checking out the render time of an HDR project or exporting an 8K video to ProRes 422. Once again, the results are great and M2 Ultra does a great job finishing these tasks ahead of the rest. Now, one thing I usually don't talk about in my videos when it comes to Mac reviews is gaming. But I tried gaming with this device and the results were fantastic. First, let's begin with M1 Ultra. All right, this is Resident Evil running at this resolution. It's scaled up twice. The screen is 60 hertz, but we're getting 4950 frames per second. And the lowest we went is 23 in the last one and a half second. And the highest is like 51 right now. But what I can do is, this is M1 Ultra, by the way. So let's go to options and then games and display, display. And then over here we have metal effects. And I can turn this to quality. Now we're getting 70, 80 frames per second with M1 Ultra on Mac Studio. However, when it comes to M2 Ultra, things change a little bit. 80 frames per second. Everything is looking great. But if I go to the options and then display, and turn this to quality. Now we're getting 100 frames per second. I can actually go and change that to 100. performance. Then the image quality goes down a little bit, but but now we're getting 130, 140 frames per second in this resolution. But our screen is only 60 hertz. So what can we do? Hmm. So I have brought in my Razer display. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna launch the same game. So now, so now we're getting 130 frames per second in this 144 hertz screen. And it, almost no tear. I cannot see any tear. I don't know if you can. I'm not seeing any tear. And let's go to the settings again. And metal effects upscaling. First, turn that to quality. Immediately jump to 140 frames per second. 130 frames per second. Change that to performance. Now we're getting 200 frames <laughs> per second in this game. Now I have connected my iPad to my uh, Mac Studio. As you can see, I am getting 200 frames. And I can play it on my iPad screen as well. In the end, I'm very happily surprised with M2 Ultra Max Studio. This is a fantastic device. This device gets the job done. I was very happy with my M1 Max Studio. I can't even imagine what I'll be able to do with this because 
this is what happens when you have a more capable device that has that headroom. When you're editing a video, when you reach your limit, you kind of start, you know, not putting that effect there, not trying that much if you need to wait for it to render, if you need for it to wait to catch up with the frames and everything. If the machine is playing catch up with you, sometimes you, you don't get inspired to make the video to its best potential. But when the device is right there with you, when it caught up with you, and it's just waiting for you to throw more work at it, then you get inspired and you want to do more, you want to create more. Well, thank you very much for watching this video and I hope you enjoyed it. But as usual, I'm curious about what you think about M2 Ultra Mac Studio or M2 Max Mac Studio or Mac Pro. What do you think about its comeback? What do you think is going to happen with that machine? And until I see you the next time, I'm going to leave you with videos like I wasn't expecting this. What Apple didn't tell you, what other creators didn't tell you, what Apple didn't tell the creators, what creators didn't tell Apple, what Apple didn't tell Apple, what Tim Cook said about Farouk's grandma. And I was wrong about M2 Ultra <laughs> Mac Studio kind of videos. I wish you patience and best of luck with what is coming after these videos. And until I see you the next time, take really good care of yourselves. And horse check out it.